Hello and welcome to the Primary P and School Support Premium online workshop. My name is Samantha Lawrence and I am a Development Officer for Active Cornwall for children, young people and families. This is a variation of our workshops that we have been delivering in priority areas of Cornwall for the past couple of months. So um, we hope you find this useful and um, please feel free to watch it in your own time, share it with your colleagues um, from your own school and from different schools and make use of the supportive resources. So this workshop will cover why is PE, school sport and physical activity important in general, but asking you to look specifically at your school and your school objectives. There was a group activity which we have enabled you to do at home alone, um, but hopefully you can get some help from a colleague or a nearby school. Use of funding best practice. Uh, we will have uh, Karen Edmund from GLL looking specifically at um, swimming, evidence of impact and reporting, and resources and support. During this point in the workshop, uh, we wanted to get an idea of what all attendees wanted to get out of the workshop so that we could address it specifically um, throughout the couple, the couple of hours and to make sure at the end that we had addressed their concerns. Uh, as you are working from home, feel free to write down an objective that you want to get out of this. If by the end of it, you have not had your questions answered, then um, please feel free to drop us an email and we'll see if we can answer your specific queries. Um, if you email primary.sportpremium at cornwall.gov.uk. Okay, we're going to spend the next few minutes thinking about PE school sport and physical activity in general and putting the funding into a little bit of context for you. So what I would like you to do is spend the next few minutes thinking about why PE school sport and physical activity is important to you and specifically your school objectives. Now your school objectives might be to have a very active school, therefore it's very clear that this is central to your objectives. But your objectives also might be to have improved English and maths results, to improve your Ofsted results, to improve your behaviour, your attendance, to reduce exclusions, um, to, to support your special educational needs students, to, to look at your overall school well-being. Um, whatever it is, have a think about where PE, school sport and physical activity fits within those objectives. So looking at um, data from the last academic year gathered by the Active Lives Survey on behalf of Sport England, we are going to have a couple of true or false questions to test your knowledge. So we're looking specifically at years three and six in Cornwall, um, and there is a picture there of the latest CMO guidelines uh, to help you. Um, but what I'd like you to think about is, um, do you think, true or false, that fewer than 50% of our children in Cornwall in years three and six are reaching the 60 minutes or more a day of CMO guidelines? The answer is true. So only 41.5% are active. So that's 60 minutes or more a day. Now, true or false, more children in Cornwall in years three and six are less active than fairly active. That is true. So 26.1% are fairly active, which means they're doing between 30 and 59 minutes a day on average. But 32.4% are less active, which means they're doing less than 30 minutes a day on average. Now, just to give you a bit of context, that 41.5% represents 7,300 children in Cornwall in years three and six. 26.1% represents 4,600 children and 32.4% represents 5,700 children. So it's 5,700 children are doing less than 30 minutes of physical activity on average per day in Cornwall. Now have a think, does that surprise you? Um, this is um, ONS data. It is the data that we um, are using as a benchmark, and it has been um, it has been gathered across 
um, across the country, um, but we're specifically looking at Cornwall data today. Uh, in previous workshops, the accuracy of this data has been questioned. Um, but just to let you know, if you haven't been involved in the Active Lives survey, the survey questions um, are asked of parents and students and teachers. Okay, another question. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but the government recommends that students do 30 minutes of physical activity in school and 30 minutes of physical activity outside of school. So in year three and six in Cornwall, do you think more children in Cornwall are achieving above 30 minutes in school or out of school? It is in fact out of school. So that's 34.8% of children are doing more than 30 minutes of activity on average per day in school, which represents 6,100 children. But 65.2% of children are not reaching 30 minutes in school. It's 11,400. And 52% of children are reaching over 30 minutes of activity on average per day outside of school. So that's 9,200. So another thing the Active Lives Survey looks at is children and young people's attitudes towards sport and physical activity. And they found in 2018-19 academic year that enjoyment is the biggest driver of activity and that physically literate children are more likely to be active and are more likely to be happier and more resilient. So when you're thinking about your primary P and sport premium and how you spend it and the rest of this workshop, Think about whether your children in your school are enjoying what they're doing. Um, are there any students um, that you know that are not enjoying PE or not enjoying school sport or not enjoying the physical activity? The biggest driver for change is their enjoyment. So the primary PE and school support premium is government funding to make additional and sustainable improvements to the quality of PE, physical activity and sport offered through your core budget. Ofsted's new education inspection framework um, gives greater recognition to schools work specifically to support the personal development of pupils, such as the opportunity to learn about healthy eating, maintaining an active lifestyle, um, a broad and balanced curriculum and the opportunity to be active during the school day, specifically as well through extracurricular activities. Um, you should consider how your funding supports this. Recently, Ofsted Inspection um, P Deep Dives um, have revealed that they do ask questions about school swimming, use of funding and its impact. And um, these questions can easily be demonstrated um, by your primary P and school sport premium reporting that you have to do by the end of July. So these five indicators on screen are the five areas you can spend your funding on. So that's engagement of all pupils in regular physical activity, raising the profile of P in school sports, specifically as a tool for whole school improvement, increased confidence, knowledge and skills of all staff in teaching P and sport, an emphasis on all staff there, not just your PE staff, a broad experience of a range of sports and activities offered to all pupils, and increased participation in competitive sport. Okay, at this point in the workshop, we asked everybody to do a group activity. Um, the aim of which is to get into groups and to discuss the main challenges you have when using and reporting on your funding. Um, then you would pick the three main challenges and that could be three main challenges that you all agree on or the ones that are most difficult, whichever you decide to do um, and write those three challenges down and expand on them a little bit. You would have 10 minutes to do that. Um, if you would like to take part in this, um, we would be very, very grateful. I think it'd be really useful for your personal learning, um, but also we are planning to compile all the challenges that we have um, been given in across the work, all the workshops that we've delivered uh, and compile them into a resource for schools. Um, so if you want to take part in this, there is a, a form online that you can download um, or complete and um, you can take part in this. So just 
list have a spend 10 minutes have a think um, if you've got access to a colleague that can help you do this have a quick discussion with them um, if not um, just write down all the challenges that come into your head that could be transport restrictions on funding um, the fact that you don't see the funding somebody else dictates to you how you spend it um, anything like that um, list them all down and then choose your main three then once you've done that have 10 minutes to think about solutions to those challenges. Again, in the workshop situation, we would have swapped papers for somebody else and somebody else would come up with a solution to your challenge. Um, obviously, you, you, you cannot do that if you are home working and you are self-isolating, um, but have another think for about 10 minutes about any solutions you can come up with for your three main challenges that you've picked. If you have a colleague that you can work with on this, maybe Skype them or send them it via email, then even better and get their feedback on this um, but write your three solutions down um, on that form on that printout um, and again how that will give you a, a starting point for your resource then please feel free um, to let us know if you've got any more questions on this but again we really do appreciate you taking the time to have a look at this we will compile all the solutions all the challenges within a resource and we will share them with all schools across Cornwall um, with the idea being that it will be a useful resource for you to go back to later when you're presented with a different challenge. So for the next few minutes we're going to look at the use of funding and examples of best practice. So how should you be using your P and uh, sport premium funding to make additional and sustainable improvements um, to your school? So two key areas you should be thinking about is how you develop or add to the PE physical activity and sport that your school already provides and how you build capacity and capability within your school um, to ensure that all pupils in future years benefit from the changes that you are making now. So one area that you can spend your money on, as previously indicated out of the five indicators, are to engage all pupils in regular physical activity. So examples of that are providing targeted activities or support to involve and encourage the least active children. Um, remember that on average in years three and six in Cornwall, that is th over 30% of children. So um, another area is encouraging active play during break times and lunch times, or establishing and extending school sport clubs, activities, clubs during holidays, um, and adopting an active mile initiative um, and raising attainment in your primary school swimming. Uh, we, we encourage you to think about spending your premium on whole school improvement. So, you know, are you encouraging your pupils to take on leadership and volunteer roles? Um, have you embedded physical activity into the school day through active travel, uh, active break times, active lessons? Um, is it within your whole school action plan? Is it within your policy? Do your governors know about it? Do your parents know about it? Um, another area is increasing confidence and knowledge and skills within your staff. So professional development, mentoring, training, resources, and that's all staff. That's not just somebody who leads on PE. Um, you can hire qualified sport coaches to work alongside teachers, upskill them in specific technical areas um, and give them more confidence in order to deliver a specific sport going forward. Other areas um, include um, offering a range of sports and activities in your school. So you could introduce some new sports and perhaps you don't already do yoga or mindfulness or, or taekwondo or any, any roller skating or anything like that. Um, maybe you can partner with other schools to run sport activities and clubs. Um, and maybe you can provide or broaden the variety of extracurricular activities. Uh, another one is increasing participation in competitive sport, so increasing people's participation specifically in the school games, for example, or organising um, more sport competitions locally. So that could be within your own school, uh, it could be with a nearby school, or it, it can be a county-wide offer. As a school, we've really backed sport over the last five or six years where we felt it really was missing from the curriculum in terms of providing what this particular cohort of children needed in their lives at the time. It goes far beyond just the idea of just putting competition into sport and making sure that primary school kids 
take part, it develops a, a wonderful sense of well-being with the children. So we developed our in-house school programme first to try and allow everyone the opportunity. Uh, that's then fed into our after-school club and then further into the sports and opportunities we have within our Camborne cluster uh, and wider opportunities within the school games and uh, county-wide competitions. We've had quite a big increase last year, uh, particularly in girls' participation, but also uh, after school club, by the end of summer term, we were upwards of 70% of the school involved. Last year, we had 99% of the school from years one to six taking part in, in competitions. We had 225 children represented the school several times, which was great. We also provide for our ARB unit. We have a uh, hosted last few years, obviously, our Traviclus Games, which is like a conclusion of the year in, in the summer term. But we also run in-house competitions for them as well, so they're able to join in with our mainstream classes. Then they also take part in things like archery and botcher as well. Through competition, we've seen a definite improvement in their emotional resilience to, to win and lose. By the time they get into the upper key stage two and they're taking part in the football teams and netball teams, definitely are able to, to win and lose better and, and show that respect, honesty and, and determination to, to win. But you know, if we don't win, they tend to take it a lot better than perhaps they used to. We travel in the minibus to do some competitions. I've won medals at Penryn College, the pool school run where I came first. Not super competitive, a little bit competitive. Sports help me with confidence and meeting new friends and teamwork. There are competitive sports we can do that cater for the needs of those who aren't naturally sporty children, but there are plenty of sporting opportunities that they can get involved in. Putting the time, effort and energy into those children does pay off. Their sense of well-being and uh, achievement is, is, is great. You can quantify how many kids take part or what you win or what you don't win, but actually it's hard to quantify the feeling they have from taking part in their first event. That's gold dust. So 73% of schools in Cornwall are currently using their funding to deploy additional coaches. Um, so we just wanted to give you um, a couple of examples of how you can make sure that you are um, following best practice when it comes to using your funding um, and having coaches in your schools. So one element is to make sure that your coaches are working collaboratively with your teachers to upskill those staff. The aim is that the teacher can deliver in that skill or that sport independently after the coach has left. Um, so it should always include some CPD element. There should be clear progression for all children um, while the coach is there. So it shouldn't just be one-offs, it shouldn't just be um, a repetitive six block action where there is no progression whatsoever. It's just a lesson after lesson. Um, and it can help you improve links with your local community and offer club pathways for some of your students who are interested in following this up outside of school. There are minimum standards of deployment of coaches. Um, they are in the resource area. You can use these to help review your use of coaches and ensure that the coaches that you do use um, have met the minimum standards and that includes things like safeguarding. Active travel is a priority for us in Cornwall. Um, it helps fit in with the Cornwall Council's Climate Action Plan. Um, a lot of schools are choosing to be more eco-friendly. Um, it helps reduce illegal parking, congestion, and it helps fit daily activity into everyday life. So active travel is a really good use of this funding. You can use it to increase participation in national and local initiatives, such as the Big Pedal, Back to School Week, Clean Air Day, um, you can use it to upskill parents and school staff on the benefits of active travel. Um, and in the resource area, we have given you um, a guide to write your own school travel plan if you haven't already got one. Another area um, that actually we are big advocates for is using your funding for additional swimming. So 70% of schools in Cornwall are already using their funding on additional swimming. Um, but not all children can meet the minimum swimming attainment measures set by the government, which are to swim 25 metres at the end of year six, using a range of strokes and performing a safe self-rescue. So we would like to encourage schools, if you are not sure what to use your funding on, have a look at your swimming attainment, uh, have a look at your students, and we would recommend using it in this area. So 
you can use your funding to upskill staff with water safety and swimming training. Um, these staff can support your swimming lessons. So you can have some staff that are with the instructor or the, the, the swim teacher and others that are with your, your newly trained um, class teacher. You can provide top up swimming lessons for children not already achieving minimum standards who, or who aren't on track to achieve the minimum standards. Um, this can be through lengthening your swim time, having additional lessons. Um, we've seen some schools pay for private membership so that students who are particularly struggling can swim outside of school or join swim clubs and have free swim club places. Um, it shouldn't be used to provide your core swimming. Um, we should caveat that, but it can be used with regards to anything to do with additional swimming. Karen Edmund from GLL in Cornwall delivered the next few slides on their school swimming model. And for more information, um, you can see the school swimming guide available as a PDF downloadable from our website. If you have any questions at all, though, please drop us an email. So um, now on to evidencing impact and reporting. So Tim Marion, the Children's Young People and Families Lead at Active Cornwall, delivered this section um, during our actual workshops earlier in the year. Um, if we want these funds to continue for primary schools, how we evidence the spend and the impact of the investment is so important. Even if Ofsted aren't going to look into every detail of your spend, um, we still need to be demonstrating to the government the difference that it is making on, the, on our schools and specifically on those five indicators um, that they are saying we need to spend this money on. Um, as you can see, 82% um, of schools in Cornwall published their statement and of those schools, 84% met grant conditions. That, I mean, that sounds OK, but there is still room for improvement. There is still more work we can do to increase this and improve this. Really, we should be seeing 100% of schools publishing a report that meets grant conditions. This is funding and a statutory obligation that schools are having to do in order to um, publish how they are spending the money. Schools must publish details of how it spends its PE and sport premium by the end of the summer term or by the 31st of July 2020 at the latest. Your report must include the amount of premium you've received, a full breakdown of how it was spent, the impact the school has seen on pupils' PE, physical activity and sport participation and attainment, how the improvements will be sustainable in the future. You must also include details of your swimming attainment, including what percentage of pupils in year six can swim competently over 25 metres using a range of strokes and can perform a safe self-rescue in different water-based situations. There are two reporting templates you can use that make it much easier to report on your spending. So we encourage you to please use one of these. If you use one of these templates and answer all the sections, you'll find you'll be providing all the required information. If you develop your own, which we know some schools do, there is a possibility of missing areas and therefore not being compliant. Um, the first template is the Association of um, PE, AFP template, which replicates Ofsted's Education Inspection Framework language and is recommended on the government website. The other re reporting template is the Time to Move template, which we know a lot of schools use. Uh, it currently reflects the current Time to Move framework in Cornwall. Um, but should be noted it is being modified for next year alongside the framework. So as we move into what you should include in these reporting templates to evidence impact, the most important thing is that you know your baseline and therefore you can report on the impact of this funding from that baseline. In order to do this, you probably need a tool to measure and record your pupils. So I would say using the premium to purchase such a tool could be a good use of that investment. 
For example, do you know the percentage of children in each year group that are currently active for 30 minutes every day in school or 30 minutes outside of school? Do they do 60 minutes in total per day? Do you know the percentage of children who represent their school in competition? The impact measures should be specific and measurable over the 2019-2020 academic year. They could include a range of measures, as demonstrated in the slide, but please don't think it has to be purely about your PE and school sport or physical activity. It could include the wider impact on the school and actually should include the wider impact. It should, in, uh, it should go across other subjects and across your whole school. Um, so it could include your attainment, your attendance, your behaviour, as well as activity levels. Other examples of impact measures could include the numbers of children taking part in competition, being young leaders, taking part in extracurricular clubs and activities, taking part in community clubs, or how many um, sports you are offering as a school. It is important to evidence all areas um, of impact and not just some. So you need to evidence all the spend and break it down so that it adds up to the total given to your school. This spend should align to the P in school sport and not just the elite end. A gifted and talented programme is not great use of the premium. And even though it may be good for the well-being of your students, purchasing a number of fruit trees is also not grant compliant. Both areas we have seen in Cornwall. As mentioned earlier, evidencing sustainability is a common challenge. So we've outlined a few areas that you can cross-reference to your spend um, and help you demonstrate sustainability. For example, have you trained all staff and not just your PE lead? That increases the chance of changing your culture in your school and can evidence sustainability. Have you changed the culture and mindset and ethos of your school through your school action plan or a whole school improvement programme or engaging the local community? That again is crucial to sustainability. Establishing structures that continue post the investment are really good evidence. Um, so, for example, internal competition structures or leadership programmes or involving um, your school in the Cornwall Healthy Schools programme. Please, if you've got any other examples, please do share them with us um, and we can enhance this slide for later workshops. We haven't been given the confirmed um, details of this funding by the DfE, considering the current COVID-19 situation, um, but we are still offering the opportunity for schools to email through their final report to us so that we can have a look at it and give constructive feedback before your deadline of the 31st of July. Um, to do this, please email your report to primarysport.premium at cornwall.gov.uk before the 30th of June, and we will endeavour to get a copy back to you with comments by the 17th of July. We will aim to do it as quickly as possible, so if you send it um, as close to the deadline of the 30th, hopefully we'll get it back to you sooner rather than later. Active Cornwall then has until the 20th of September to go through all published school reports on the website after the 31st of July, um, and we collate all the county-wide information and report that back to the government. Okay, there are um, some resources and support that we can offer and that we are aware of that can help you when you are spending your primary PE and school sport premium. Um, one area is a power of an active school training. So I recognise that when we were delivering these workshops, um, we weren't all in lockdown and schools were open. Um, so this, this offer um, is for next academic year as well. Um, and if there's any online version of training that we can offer, then we will, we will help you to do that. Um, but Power of an Active School Training specifically is a twilight session that, you, that we can arrange to have hosted in your school, delivered by um, somebody from YST. Um, and it's designed to um, look at your whole school in relation to active lessons specifically. So where in your school can you um, in, increase your physical activity? Um, through just changing the approach that you take to classrooms and lessons and your timetable. Um, we're also offering um, to arrange a network to exchange ideas and offer peer support so that you can talk to other schools about how they're spending their funding, maybe work with them as well um, to um, try and reach those objectives that we, we spoke about earlier. Um, 
if either if either of those options appeal to you, um, then please drop me an email um, at primary.sportpremium at cornwall.gov.uk. Another one is active travel. So as previously mentioned, um, there is a guide to writing your own school travel plan if you don't already have one or if you would like to update it. Um, online on Cornwall Council's website, the guide actually also be, is accompanied by templates for every section of that guide. So you don't have to start from scratch. There is something that you can build upon. We're also offering the opportunity for schools to possibly win 10 free micro scooters. So we are working with micro scooters to offer three schools the opportunity to have 10. Um, the aim is you write your active travel plan, you send it in to us. Um, by the end of the academic year, we will choose uh, three schools to receive that, those scooters. And the scooters must um, contribute towards your active travel plan. Coaching in schools. Um, there's some resources in the um, in the resource area with regards to minimum deployment and minimum standards, and also an offer from Active Cornwall about how we can support you when choosing coaches and what you can use them for. We would always recommend you go to your local sport school sport partnership, so your local networks. So that is Penworth, mm -hmm. that is Peninsula, Mid Cornwall Sport Network, and Arena. So they offer a range of training. Um, they have a range of resources. Um, and you can call on them for support as well. Specifically, this this moment in time, they're offering a range of online help and online support. Um, so they're doing daily activity challenges, um, weekly challenges, um, and are co continually communicating with schools um, to support them during this time. Um, and the other areas, of course, is the Active Cornwall website. So we have a range of resources in our Time to Move toolbox, which we're continually updating. Um, if you feel that there is an, something that is missing from there or there is a resource that you cannot find or you just want some support, um, please feel free to drop us an email and we'll see if we can help. So now is the time you address your post-it. So your objective that you wrote down at the beginning of the session. Um, have we addressed that question? Um, hopefully we have, but if not, then um, drop us an email and give us a call. Um, if you've got any specific questions, we are more than happy to help. Um, and we are more than happy to do a Skype call uh, about your specific situation or just drop us an email. So any questions at all um, or any feedback on the workshop or anything, please email primarysport.premium at cornwall.gov.uk.